بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين uh, Today we are going to talk about سورة الفلق in this session uh, We need to know that سورة الفلق was revealed at the same time with سورة الناس They were both revealed at the same time uh, سورة الفلق is a مدن سورة There is a controversy amongst the scholars about the uh, سورة whether it is a مدن or مكن but the predominant opinion is that it is a uh, مدن سورة The reason for that is that it was revealed when the Prophet ﷺ had married Aisha already and therefore this had uh, to have been in uh, Medina it could not have been in, uh, in Mecca uh, the name of the surah uh, is, or it was commonly known uh, amongst, uh, or during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu as Qul A'udhu Bi Falaq. However, in, uh, in most of the books of Tafsir and in the Masahif, uh, it is called Al Falaq. Some of the companions uh, gave it the name when it's coupled with An Nas as Al Mu'awwidatan. The two surahs seeking refuge or taking refuge in Allah Azza wa Jal. It was revealed uh, after Al Fil and before Surah An Nas. Now, there is a reason for revelation for this surah and, of course, for Surah An Nas. The reason, uh, as narrated by Al Bukhari and Muslim and others, and uh, the story is uh, conveyed to us by our mother Aisha radiallahu anha. She said, a, uh, a spell of uh, magic was uh, put on the Prophet وسلم, to the extent that he used to imagine that he is, he is having intercourse with his wives while in reality he wasn't. So he, and, and this took a while, this took months. Uh, then he started supplicating Allah Azza wa Some of the scholars said uh, after the duration of about six months is when he started وسلم, supplicating Allah Azza wa Then one, t- one day Aisha said, uh, he came and said to me, O oh Aisha, uh, Allah Azza wa has responded. He has informed me, in other words, the reason of this uh, ailing that uh, I'm suffering. This uh, he, he didn't know what it was, of course. He didn't know that uh, it was magic, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he thought it was uh, just a normal illness of some sort. Well, that is a form of illness, but he didn't know that it was magic. At any case, uh, he said, two men came to me, one sat at my head and one sat at the end of my body at my feet. And one of them said to the other, uh, what is uh, ailing the man? What's wrong with him? What's his sickness? The, the second one or the other one said, he's bewitched. He said, or he asked him, with what? What was used? He said, a comb and the hair that sticks to the comb when you comb your hair or your beard, uh, that's what was used. Then he asked him, and who did that? He said, a Jewish person from the tribe, the tribe of Zurayq. His name is Labid ibn al-Asa. Uh, he asked him, where is it? Where did he place this? He said, he placed it in the skin of a pollen of a male date palm. Under a rock, in a well that's called a well, the well of Darwan, in the premises of the tribe of Zurayq. In one of the other narrations, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Aisha, Jibreel came down with Al-Mu'awwidatan, the two surahs, Al-Falaq and Al-Nas. And uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam now knew according to the first narration, where the uh, magic was hidden. So he sent some of the companions, some of the narrations say it was Ali radiallahu anhu with other companions. 
and they uh, fetched that from the uh, from under that rock in the uh, in the well and brought it to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam then the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam told aisha then jibril commanded me to untie the knots as i am reciting to recite a verse and untie so i started and continued until i finished and then aisha uh, anha, described how he told her uh, he stood up very energetic as if he hadn't suffered anything prior to that moment uh, then he went back to aisha sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, and described, or he informed Aisha, and described to her the scene. He said, the water of that well was like the infusion of henna leaves. You know, henna leaves is, is reddish when it's, when it's soaked in water, right? And he said, and the tops of the date palm trees near it are like the heads of the devils. Then the companions asked the Prophet ﷺ, should we not go and kill that evil man? Labid ibn al-Asam, the, the, the Jewish man who did that. He said, Allah Azza wa Jal, he said, no, Allah had cured me. And I fear that this might provoke evil amongst the people. The... Uh, then he commanded the companions to uh, fill the, the, the well with, uh, with earth. The scholars said when commenting on this statement of the Prophet wasallam, he disliked that uh, evil would spread amongst people or that people would, out of curiosity, start looking to learn how this magic is made or done to others. And he wanted to prevent, as a precautionary measure, he wanted to prevent that from happening. So, if he would have killed that man, then his news would have spread and people would have started being curious. Now, another reason is that he did not want, as the case when he did not kill the hypocrites, though he was informed of them by name. And when he was asked why at that time, he said, I don't want people to say that Muhammad is killing his companions because people don't know a hypocrite. A hypocrite is someone who acts like a believer but conceals disbelief and denial in the message. So if, we, if he would have killed the hypocrites at that time, people would have said, oh, Muhammad is killing his own people his own companions, his own believers. So they said, this is another reason he sallallahu alayhi wa uh, might have refrained from killing Labid for. Uh, and therefore people would uh, not uh, be uh, enthused to, to embrace Islam. Uh, there are important comments from the scholars regarding this, uh, this narration or the reason for revelation. Ibn Hajar said, this narration proves that magic could have been done to the Prophet or was done to the Prophet وسلم, despite his lofty rank. Because uh, Al-Mazari said some of the innovators claimed that this is a false narration, though it is in Al-Bukhari and Muslim and other books. Why? Because they said, if we believe this hap happened and that the Prophet ﷺ used to uh, think or imagine that he had intercourse with his wives, while in reality he did not, then people would say, well, he could be saying that he saw Jibreel and he revealed such and such and such to him. But in reality, he didn't. He never did. And uh, we don't know the source of this, referring to the Quran. And therefore, they rejected uh, this narration. 
uh, Ibn al-Qassar said, what afflicted the Prophet وسلم, this magic, is nothing but a form of a sickness. Yani it's a worldly matter. It is not pertaining to him conveying the message وسلم. It is a worldly matter. It's simply a form of illness. Because he said in the narration, Allah had cured me from the illness. أَمَّا أَنَا فَقَدْ شَفَانِيَ Allah. Allah had cured me from the illness. Uh, another thing that the scholars refuted the claim of these innovators who rejected and denied this uh, authentic narration is that the Prophet وسلم, pertaining to conveying the message is infallible and he's supported by miracles. But with regards to worldly matters, he's just a human being. As in the case when he was uh, asked uh, the opinion, his opinion regarding the, the trees and all that, and he gave his opinion, and then uh, the, the trees were ruined, and then the companions came, they thought it was something uh, out of revelation. So they adhered to his opinion, his suggestion. They said, and he said, I'm only a human being, and this is a worldly matter. I could be right, and I could be wrong. So, pertaining to worldly matters, he's a human being, sallallahu alayhi wa he can be right and he can, can be wrong. But pertaining to the message, to conveying the message of Islam, conveying what is revealed upon him from Allah, he is definitely infallible, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The surah starts, قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقَ Say, I seek refuge in the Lord of daybreak. Al-Falaq is translated in uh, or explained in most books as the daybreak. Some of the scholars said it could also be referring to all creation of Allah Azza wa Jal. This surah and Surah Al-Nas uh, instructs the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because Qul is actually addressing who? As we always said before, Qul is addressing Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and then his Ummah after that. Uh, to adhere to what instructions are given in that verse. But for him, in principle, to say what comes after, قُلْ So Allah is instructing him وسلم, to seek refuge in Allah Azza wa Jal from all evil that comes from outside. From outside the, bound, the boundary of ourselves, right? That we cannot repel either because it's hidden and concealed or we have no power or capability to repel it. Min sharri ma khalaqa from the evil of that which he created. All evil, known, unknown, hidden, displayed, apparent, whatever, all types of evil. Because you're you're seeking refuge. In the Lord, who has control, who has created everything and everyone. So anything or anyone who wants evil done to you, when you're seeking refuge in the one who created and has control over him or her or it, then you're saved. You're saved. And from the evil of darkness... When it settles, غاسق. The scholar said, غاسق also refers to the darkest part of the night. So, قل أعوذ برب الفلق من شر ما خلق. So I seek refuge in the Lord from the from all evil that He's created, and from the evil of this darkness when it settles. Uh, because when it's dark, things are not seen, things are concealed. You don't know what's hidden out there. You don't know what's concealed. You don't know what to expect. That darkness, when it spreads and it becomes pitch black, it's usually a source of fear to people.
a thief can can uh, or, uh, or uh, some robbery can happen uh, someone can walk up to you at night and, and shoot you or kill you or uh, rape a, a woman or anything can be done uh, if you're walking in a on a journey or driving in a, on a journey any animal can uh, if you have a snake or a scorpion that's sitting at night we've experienced things like that i was in a with a, with a group of brothers once and we were sitting at night after salat al-isha we were just talking and it was an open area and suddenly one of us one of the the, the group started screaming and it was a scorpion why it was dark so darkness is a source of fear because it is the source of the unexpected the hidden the concealed so you seek refuge in Allah Azza wa Jal from that uh, evil also uh, when it's dark when you're behind doors at night anyone who weakens his heart weakens shaitan can come and attack and, and adorn and decorate evil for him whispers that sadden and grief and terrify the human being can happen at night when it's daybreak when it's light everywhere it's different you know your uh, spirit is different than when it is at night and from the evil of women who blow on uh, knots uh, why did Allah Azza wa Jal mention nafathat here is a feminine form of the word referring to women why did Allah Azza wa Jal mention women in, in, uh, in magic in particular because at the time uh, it was commonly known that women were the ones who were uh, practicing uh, magic so Allah is, is, is listing things to ask to seek refuge in him from this is the third thing the uh, the evil of those who blow on knots from those who uh, from from magicians uh, in other words and anyone who uh, is out there to spread corruption on earth and harm people وَمِن شَرِّ حَاسِدٍ إِذَا حَسَدٍ Now this is the fourth thing to seek refuge in Allah Azza wa from and from the evil of an envier when he envies. Now he or she. Uh, envy is, is uh, a hitting feeling or emotion uh, against uh, others. It's when you wish that a, a bounty uh, which is possessed by someone else is removed from him or her. That's what hasad is. There is something else called ghibta. Ghibta is to wish to have the bounties and the good others have without wishing for that to be removed from them. Because otherwise it becomes envy, it becomes hasad. Now regardless, this feeling, this ill feeling a person harbors towards others, regardless of whether or not he or she acts upon it, just the mere feeling in the heart is hasad. Acting upon it is much worse than just harboring that feeling in your heart. Uh, and, and envy is a reality, it's a fact, it's something that uh, everybody knows that exists and many people suffer from it. Uh, and Allah Azza wa Jal is instructing Muhammad وسلم, and us afterwards uh, to seek refuge in Allah Azza wa Jal from the evil of those who envy, so those who are ill-hearted, and uh, hasad is something that is impermissible in Islam. The Prophet ﷺ said 
uh, as reported by Imam Ahmed in his Musnad and classified as authentic by Al-Albani, he said, لا تحسدوا ولا تباغضوا Don't envy one another and don't hate each other. And this is a clear instruction from the Prophet ﷺ prohibiting envy and hatred amongst Muslims. Because it negates faith. The Prophet ﷺ said, uh, as reported by Al Nasa'i in his Sunan, and classified as sound, Hassan by Al Albani, he said, One heart of a believer or the heart of the believer cannot have coexisting in it at the same time belief and envy. They cannot coexist in a, in a heart of a believer. His belief and him envying uh, others. The Prophet ﷺ said to Uqba ibn Amir, as reported by Al-Nasa'i and classified as authentic by Al-Albani, uh, he said, uh, O Uqba ibn Amir, you will not recite a surah that is more beloved to Allah Azza wa Jal and greater as a means of refuge to repel evil than قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقِ You will not recite anything from the Qur'an that is more beloved to Allah and greater in effect, in its impact, in repelling evil from you than قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقِ So if you can recite it every single salah, then do so. With this we will conclude Surah Al-Falaq. Uh, and inshallah in the following session we will... Uh, do Surah Al-Nas, with which we will conclude Juzu Amma. Subhanakallah, Alhamdulillah, Ashhadu Allah, Ilaha Illa Ant, Astaghfiruka, Tubuli.